the pyramids, greatest of the seven wonders of the world. Deep inside these monuments to the pharaohs of Egypt, in the hieroglyphics lining the burial chambers, are found the first mention of a rather old new phenomenon, the aloe vera. This curious natural beauty was treasured by the Egyptians who named it the plant of immortality. Aloe vera's first medicinal use is recorded on 4,000-year-old clay tablets by early Sumerian pharmacists. The other great civilizations of biblical times are also known to have valued aloe. Traders promoted the use of aloe and were largely responsible for its spread across Africa, India, and into the Far East. In southern Europe, the Greeks and Romans prized aloe, so much that Alexander the Great conquered the island of Socotra just to possess its aloe fields. Interest in aloe declined during the Dark Ages and rekindled again during the Renaissance. But Renaissance research was primitive by today's standards, and it led to many improperly drawn medical conclusions, some of which still haunt aloe's reputation today. Because aloe could not be grown in cool climates, it had to be transported to the northern centers of science. Leaves arrived for testing dried and virtually useless. Early experimenters never had the advantage of testing fresh aloe, nor did they understand the effects of additives and impurities. They simply did not understand what they had found and eventually saddled aloe with a false and undeserved reputation for having little or no value. But not everyone forgot the wonders this plant had to offer. In the courts of China, its uses were observed and noted by the famous explorer Marco Polo. Aloe became a traditional remedy in southern Europe as its popularity continued to grow. During the Spanish and French explorations of the New World, the Jesuit priests who accompanied them carried and transplanted aloe barbadensis, spreading the knowledge of its use to millions. It was a Spanish priest with Cortez who first brought aloe into Mexico and what is now Texas, where it is today grown extensively. As the Spanish Empire faltered, the understanding of aloe vera began to fade, waiting patiently to be rediscovered. The 30s, desperate times, hopeful times. The Depression had rocked America, leaving the common man cautious and skeptical. World War I was still a painful memory but at least it had helped us to develop a new emphasis on technology. Things were changing for the better. Medicine's newest tool was crude, but promising. The X-ray, later to become a foundation stone of modern medical technique. However, the unfortunate effect of this new treatment was painful and often disfiguring thermal radiation burns caused by overexposure. Efforts to find ways of treating these types of burns soon led scientists and dermatologists to aloe vera, the burn plant. Its effect on radiation burns was documented, and in 1934, Dr. C. E. Collins reported that freshly slit aloe vera leaves applied directly to radiation burns quickly improved the skin's rate of recovery. When these findings were published the following year in Radiological Review, they generated great interest in the potential of aloe vera and served as a catalyst for further research. In 1936, Dr. Carol S. Wright also recorded positive results in treating X-ray ulcerations with fresh aloe vera gel, thereby corroborating Dr. Collins' findings. A broader study by Dr. J. E. Crew was reported in the Minnesota Journal of Medicine, finding aloe vera to be effective in treating chronic ulcers, eczema, thermal burns, sunburns, and poison ivy. As the decade of the 30s came to a close, aloe vera's future seemed very bright. The 40s were known as the Big Band era. 
Glenn Miller zoot suits and flashy new cars were the fashion of the day. Belief in the new age of prosperity and peace was replaced by fear of war. Then war itself. Until... Nagasaki, and the world would never be the same again. Nuclear warfare had become a reality. Interest in aloe vera as a treatment for radiation burns was renewed. But researchers had to overcome some rather misleading information published earlier in the decade. Dr. Thomas Rowe and his colleagues at the Medical College of Virginia misinterpreted findings on the relationship between the freshness of aloe vera and its effectiveness in treatment. Since the leaves used in the test were already oxidized and decomposed when received, the results naturally showed no difference. Unfortunately, aloe seemed discredited once again, and the decade closed with the secrets of aloe vera still a mystery. The 50s. Tail fins. Rock and roll. Cold War. The United States was no longer the only nation to possess atomic weapons. Our Atomic Energy Commission began to seek effective ways of treating the devastating number of radiation burns projected in the case of a global nuclear war. The Commission's testing program led them to reports of aloe treatments for X-ray radiation burns from 20 years earlier. These tests showed positive results with aloe-based treatments, but once again, no direct link was made between effectiveness and the freshness of the leaves. The Commission's tests did, however, stimulate new research. Scientists from the Michigan Department of Health found that aloe vera contained an antibacterial agent effective in inhibiting the growth of tubercule bacilli, as well as 75 different chemical components, including proteins, enzymes, and reducing sugars. Tests also showed positive results with aloe vera as an antiviral and antifungal agent. Aloe seemed to have everything going for it now. Interest was high, research was flourishing. But maybe things were moving a little too fast. This newfound acclaim caused an aloe vera craze in the late 50s. In an effort to inform and protect consumers, the Army Surgical Research Branch conducted tests on commercially available aloe products. The results showed most of these to be ineffective and worthless. Not surprising with what we know today, products made with unstable aloe will quickly become inert and contaminated. The 60s, a time of change. The Beatles had seen to that, in the national pastime. It was a period of questions and re-examination. That's exactly what researchers did with aloe vera, and some exciting results emerged. Scientists found that they had been misled by isolation testing of aloe's chemical components. It now seemed that aloe's effectiveness was due to the precise chemical compounding carried on by the plant itself. Elements found to be ineffective alone worked magic when combined. But most importantly, these tests proved what history had tried to reveal that when aloe vera gel is exposed to the air, it oxidizes and quickly loses its strength. At last, the need for preservation was recognized. In the 70s, America celebrated her 200th birthday as a more mature nation and began to respond to economic challenges at home and abroad. We realized the value of natural resources and conservation became our watchword. And as people rediscovered their roots and the world around them, natural became a national password. 
At last there was a breakthrough for aloe vera. Researchers at Aloe Vera of America perfected and patented a process for stabilizing the aloe gel. Now it could be stored indefinitely and countless new uses became possible. Lotions, shampoos, cosmetics and aloe juice as a natural food supplement.